Welcome to the Car Dealer Hacking Podcast, bringing you interviews with automotive industry leaders, showing tips and strategies to find the right cars for your dealership. Here's your host, Barry Newman. Hey, everybody, this is Barry Newman from Car Dealer Hacking Podcast. This week, my guest is Matt Koenig from the Rockstar. What? It's not. It is. <laughs> Rockstar events. That's awesome. Rock star event you can attend in the coming year, right? Uh, anyhow, Matt and I have gotten acquainted. I've been gone to quite a few of his events. I've enjoyed every one of them. Uh, I'm really excited to have him on here to answer some questions for uh, uh, things that can help you. And uh, we're going to start with Matt introducing himself. Give us a quick rundown of what's going on, what you're working on. Right on. Yeah. Uh, my name's Matt and I'm, I'm one of the two dudes that started these rock star events and uh, we've been working on some really cool stuff this, this year, man. We've, uh, we've, we're, we're shifting gears from what people have been hearing rock star conference. Cause we were reminded that people now just think conferences are getting boring and they suck. So uh, we, we rebranded it cause we, uh, we don't want to put on conferences. <laughs> we want to put on events yeah. and, um, our first two were like uh, in a movie theater and like a place where Willie Nelson played and, and, and it, the, the, the environment fit the mission to feel like a rock concert that you learn stuff at. And uh, when we shifted gears to doing these big like hotel style events, the content stayed good, but we, we, we realized it just didn't feel as rock and roll. So we've been um, making some crazy changes to make sure we go back to that. And as, as a matter of fact, even the one in May, while it's in the same uh, at the D Hotel and Casino, you're going to see a shift in that event. Good. Uh, and the the whole feel and everything when you when you get in the room. So exciting go, stuff. Go to crazy and come back a little. I like that. Yeah, yeah. We really, we really. You know, it's like um, getting back to our roots in how we're doing stuff. You know, one of the things people dug about Rockstar when we did the first one, we never planned on doing a second one. All of a sudden, people were like, our traffic spiked on our little minimal site we made for that first event. And people were like, when are you going to do the next one? No, oh, this is so, and people are still talking about the the first one we did in an Alamo draft house movie theater. And we went, that's what everyone loved. Why did we try and turn it into, you know, a, a cooler version of digital dealer? You know, well, what I mean? just so you know, that's one of the things that attracted me to it. Because when I come to your events, you, feel something because you uh they're genuine it comes from the heart i mean everybody there has a genuine feeling that you're there to you presented all these people in your event to help them and uh just keep doing it man that's what it's all about i love doing that feel something thank you i love hearing that man we it's funny i heard somebody the other day uh not the other day sorry it's about uh four weeks ago i was speaking at a and an event, and I mean, uh, great event, great people. And um, one of the guys was talking about, he was telling a story about how uh, this gentleman um, was paying a kid to cut his grass, college kid. The gentleman was a former military guy, ex-Marine. And um, one day the kid cutting his grass told him, he said, I, I, listen, uh, I, I, can't, I can't cut your grass anymore. And the guy's like, why? And he goes, because I don't like the way you talk to me. He goes, I don't. You know, the, the, the way you talk to me it doesn't make me feel good. And the guy couldn't understand. He was like, man, I'm paying this kid like 15 bucks an hour to cut my grass. Like, I, who cares about your feelings? You know, that's not what it's about. It's work. You know, you go to work to make money. And it was funny because it, it, it just clicked. And, and I, I, we're having this conversation with a group of people. And I said, I understand that that guy, uh, he was in the military where, where they try and Stop, you know, you, you can't get emotional. You have to be able to act in a moment. So I understand that. In that environment, you've got to be ready for that. But I'm like, in a, in a non-military uh, working environment, in an everyday, like, all that matters is how people feel. That's it. Because how you feel. Online too, right? Yeah, same thing online, man. If we can't create a feeling, it, well, we always create a feeling. The feeling's either good bad or indifference and if we can't help someone feel good they won't take action toward us they won't move toward us everything but making someone feel good uh everything else will cause them to move away from us 
right? right? Everybody gets on Joel Osteen because they're like, how come all you ever do is talk about positive stuff in the Bible? Well, Joel Osteen, <laughs> I remember hearing a, hearing a quote one time. He goes, well, I feel like there's plenty of churches that talk about the bad stuff, and if people want to go here, they can. And I'm like, yeah, there you go. Like uh, it, it's so I think the same thing, like what you, you know, what you do online, you know, you're posting stuff, you're always trying to help people. You're always sharing uh, these stories that are trying to be inspiring to folks. And I think that, that's it, man. That's what it's all about. So that's yeah, because we're uh, back. Love on through the same thing. I mean, everything that's happening, all the changes that are happening every day online and, and all the different platforms and, you know, it's a lot to keep up with. So, oh, dude, it's if you, nuts. If you can let people know that, they're not alone. <laughs> you know, it just you, you automatically have their attention, and and then you just find out what what they need help with. And that's the feeling that I like on, on in getting involved in marketing online. You know, it's a good feeling when uh, you know every now and then, like I'll get a a message from someone on Facebook that that maybe I don't like. I, I haven't met, or uh, you know, maybe we met one time years ago at a conference or something, and. And, you know, a brief, you know, hey, great to meet you. And, oh, hey, I'll connect with you online. And then a couple of years later to have somebody go like, you know, send a message and say, man, I've been listening to, to this or I've been watching your videos. And I got to tell you, it's been, it, it, these are the life changes that have happened to me. And I'm just like, holy cow, that feels so good to hear because you don't always know. You know what I mean? I got a message from a dude and I shared it a couple weeks ago. Um, Jose Luis Debda, he's down in Texas. And uh, he was a sales a sales guy when he came to uh, Rockstar in Dallas, um, and uh, it was interesting because if I remember, like right after he shared some feedback, like this is what I liked, this is what I didn't like, or um, you know, this is what I hope to see the next one. And I was like, oh, man, I, I love that kind of feedback, so we can make it a bit great. And uh, you know, every couple months he just you know stay in touch or just say you know something. And then it was just a couple of weeks ago, he shared like, you know, I just got promoted to a sales management role. And he's like, in everything that's led me here is because of Rockstar. I was like, holy crap, that's so great. Like, that's a good feeling. So now you're, now you're uh, uh, coming on every day on a podcast, you said? Yeah, Monday, uh, Monday through Friday. So we do it five days a week. Uh, and we use Anchor as our podcasting platform, anchor.fm forward slash Rockstar. Uh, yeah. So it's on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, CastBox, like eight or nine different platforms. We actually just started getting um, sponsors, picking up sponsors through Anchor. Like Company A wants to sponsor your podcast, and it's like it, it's pretty neat. Like um, we've only got maybe 50, 54 episodes on there. Uh, um, what's 50, that? 50, yeah. 50. Wow. But, yeah, but that's all over like the last year. Uh, it was being done like it was so sporadic. My goal, is, what's that? My goal is to do fifty four in a year. So, uh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Like, um, I, so I started doing it daily in December, like the Monday through Friday. But I got to tell you, twenty of those episodes are literally the last two months, like um, or last month. Um, before that, it was literally maybe once every week, two weeks. Like it would be whenever something came up. Man, I'm going to do a podcast. And what I realized was nobody's going to subscribe to something if they don't think there's going to be regular content. Right, right. And I, I know the marketing rules. Uh, I just have never been good at following rules. <laughs> <laughs> I got to fan out because I'm going to do, um, out of those 52 that I want to get done this year, you know, 40 of them are going to be car dealers here in the area. And uh, we're going to try to fan out uh in the area and that that takes some that takes a little time you know i could i it have does. A schedule when they're not on the showroom floor you know with a customer and that type of thing and uh so i want to i'm trying to do some background pictures and to show them a lot of these guys don't know how how many assets they have on their lot you know when i start taking and i walk in there and i show them some of the pictures and uh, quick videos i do when i walk around on their lot you're like, oh yeah, geez, I should I should tell other people about that. You know, the cool little things that are going on there, and uh, so that's kind of what I'm, I'm, there's two birds with one stone. I, I want to be able to help them. I talk about uh, uh, doing little campaigns on Instagram with a vehicle, you know, that run up three, four, five days, and 
and for invest a little money and see what kind of return you get from investing that little money. And, and then before you know it, they have uh, with very little money, they're advertising every car on their lot virtually, you know, and they, Bingo. They can do that's the kicker, man. You know, it's funny that you talk about that. Uh, this is going to sound counterintuitive coming from a guy who still has ownership stake in a website company, <laughs> um, but it's Spanish. So it's different sort of different. It's just different language. But here's the thing that I think a lot of dealers miss the boat on. When they're running ads, they're advertising um, just generally to their website, right? It's like, well, let me just run an ad. And then if someone happens to be in the market for a car, maybe I can get them to my website. And that's not bad. Uh, let's that's just start. It's no. brand building, right? Like, hey, ABC Motors, where we, you know, home of the lifetime warranty, home of the free oil changes for life, whatever. That's that's good for general ads. But if you've got 300 cars on your lot, I'm just saying, uh, there's something that I think is brilliant, and it's like what you just said about Instagram. You've got 300 cars. And, uh, let's say your ad budget every month. Let's say right now you're running ads spending $10,000 a month. Okay, let's say you have a hundred cars. Can I keep the math easier for me? You spend ten grand a month in advertising and stuff. What if, like, that's a hundred dollars per car? What if you just every time you got a car? What if you ran a hundred dollars worth of ads about that car in a in a certain radius of your dealership, and you really did a good ad, a video ad or picture ad that linked directly to that car on your website. So they could see all the info. What if, like, what if dealers specifically ran ads for the car? Um, Sean Stapleton and the guys at Dealer Teamwork do that for like Google Ads, for example, where they run an ad and it takes you directly to a special on that car. And I think what they're doing in that arena is cool. They do a great job. But I'm seeing bring it down even more to like what you're talking about: yeah. Facebook yeah. and Instagram, and do just that one car ad specific, so that people see it. Let me ask you, if, and tell me if I'm wrong, but would you still say that there are a fair number of hours in the course of a salesperson's day where there's downtime, that they could be doing a video, but they don't? Bro, I <laughs> yeah, think... In a, am I wrong on that? Or is it well, all you're so things? right. You know, that the, the average salesperson, if you ask them and they're honest, they say three hours of their day max. The Now I see the average. There's the Ali Rita who is busy all day, right. and then there's regular every day. They're, they're, if they, if, my goal is to get them to create a muscle where they spend five hours a week to go out and shoot 59 second videos of all the cars they got in stock, and then that will help them uh, realize who the perfect customer for that vehicle is. And then do the marketing just for that person. You're, you're only looking for one customer on every car. You know, and you're, yep. when, when you do the 59 second video and you have that ideal customer in mind for that vehicle, it's almost like you're talking directly one on one with them. And I think from what the response is, little response that I'm getting on social media, that's that, that seems to work. You know, I, I think that's a good way to do it. And it's so. so so for five minutes, five minutes, or for five hours a week, if they invested in that, they'd have the content, just like you're doing your podcast. You know, you do them uh, relatively quickly, and then they come out every week. You don't shoot one every every day, right? So, so no, I I record every day. <laughs> same, thing, same thing with each video. You know, if they have huh? schedule them on Instagram to come out every day to tell a story, one item. 59 second video and at the end of five days their pipeline should be full with customers and their showroom to buy those cars you hit it. i think the challenge people have with it is they don't realize that like when you're shooting content because i used to do video seo and so i would shoot and chris actually worked at a dealership chris my business partner chris uh and, and he was the guy that um i would go and sh like we uh, for new car dealers we would take every new car and do five videos per car uh and then those videos would be on youtube we'd, we'd serve them up with all the super secret sauce and they would show up in google search and so chris was the sales guy that i would help script out videos with him and then he would record them uh, and i would record him as he would do the presentations climb out of a cadillac drunk stuff like that but here's what a lot of folks don't realize 
you, if you're creating those videos, like those we were creating as evergreen content, right? So it would live on YouTube. So when we would say it's 2012 Cadillac, whatever, 2013 Cadillac uh, DTS, the, the whole idea is when that becomes a used car, it's that video is still going to show up, right? But people think if I shoot videos today, like I'm going to get results right now all the time. And you don't like we, we had been doing the podcast for a year, but sporadically then started doing it five days a week. And um, one cool thing with anchor is you can ask people to support your podcast, right? And say, Hey, you could like give money every month. Right. Uh, and we're building this rock star business, right? We're trying to get our livelihood. And we've like our buddy, Joe Ingram, you know, he, he, he supports monthly the podcast. Uh, we have sponsorships, but I can tell you, a year of doing the podcast, roughly, you know, 30, 40 episodes over the year, very little traction, very little interaction, nobody communicating, nobody anything, very little views. Now, fast forward time, uh, a year later, and after just getting to the point of going, we're committed, I'm, I'm actually doing this every day of the week, uh, during the week, uh, now we've got a, a little over 2,000 plays, and all of that, all of that spiked uh, November of 2018 is when it, the change happened uh, because we started doing it daily. There were a, so out of those 2,200, a thousand of them, a thousand of them happened in December. So we've been doing it a whole year, and then a 50 percent spike, boom, happened in December. It, but that's the thing is like um, a lot of folks quit going out and doing what you're saying to do because they they go out and they record the videos and they're like all right, I did it for a couple of weeks and I got nothing. And it's like, no, you just do it. It just becomes part of your day. You just do it. You don't do it because if I do this video, someone will come right now. Granted, that is the goal. You know, Frank Kern talks out about like, you know, don't waste time doing all of this, da, 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 and then like hoping you eventually email them into buying from you. Um, you know, he's like, do something that creates right now conversion. And I think it's you do both. The challenge a lot of marketers talk about you do it this way. Get them in your funnel, send them emails forever. Eventually, they'll buy from you, right? Russell Brunson tracks it well, right? Trip, trip wire, get, give them ethical bait, and then upsell them. Okay, you can. And that's not a bad way to do it. Do that. And there's, let me just do a one page, one ad. Yeah. I want you to buy this, buy this product right now. Yeah, absolutely. Where you show up every day in social media, that's uh, uh, even... Even what we're doing right now has uh, going to show up on social media in some way, shape, or form. And it's us being us and one more chance for people to get to know us and how we can help them. And that's 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 what I love about doing all this stuff, you know, that there's no – I mean, somebody like me that didn't even have a smartphone until 2012 can now be on four or five platforms and put out content that I like doing, that I get feedback from people that – I can help them with in some small way. And that's uh, uh, the possible. And I'm just getting started. You know, the possibilities are endless because Amen. The, the amount of people that show up every day in your phone that are actually on their live, particularly like on Instagram, there's like 400 million people that are looking at their phone. And if you're in front of them or something that they're looking for, you make a connection you, and you build trust and all that stuff that you're supposed to do. And, uh, and it works if you're genuine about it. So hopefully there's, there's hope for us old guys online too. <laughs> yeah. You know, there definitely is bro. And I'll tell you what, man, I just think um, the big takeaway for a lot of folks is they've got to understand, like just stay at it because you don't get instant results all the time. And so yeah. don't, don't quit just cause you're, you're recording videos and you're not getting the response you want yet out there. Or you're, you know, if, if it's somebody out there posting on Instagram, but they feel like, man, I'm just not getting, not getting the responses I want necessarily. It's like, okay, well don't quit. Just keep doing what you're doing. If you don't feel like what you're doing is getting the message across, change the message, but stay, whatever you do, keep doing it, you know? Yeah measure what you're doing because sure, you'll sure. put out five in a row that done nothing like you said and then all of a sudden you'll have a december where what you're doing starts to connect and then you start doing more of that and less of what you were doing that 
got zero views. And then you just try to get a little better every day and let out the next one and get a little better after that and a little better after that. And that's getting back to what I was saying before about developing the muscle. And then you find that it's not a struggle to do it. You can get good enough at it where you enjoy doing it. And then it's just a matter of turning the phone on, you know, and then it, 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 it just, it, 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 that in conjunction with like on the lot, if you have a particular vehicle, you walk out there and you automatically look at it differently and you can get that 59 second video done because you've done a million of them and you get to the point and then it's done, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done. You, you hit it right on the head. I, uh, it's funny. I did, um, when we would do walk around videos, we always did like, there were always five angles of the call that we would talk about. Right. So it was, you know, this area, this area, this area, like we had a, a model, if you will, for here's how we're going to do these walk around videos. We're always going to touch these five areas of the car in, in a specific way in, in how we're going to talk about them. And I'll tell you what, the, re- the results were good, man. We had a, a Buick, it was a Buick GMC Cadillac dealer getting over uh, 1,200 unique video views per month. And not only getting over 1,200 unique video views per month, but um, the video views were over 60 seconds each. Now, that's intentional people going out onto Google, onto YouTube, searching, seeing these videos Chris was recording and saying, I'm going to watch this for more than 60 seconds. Like, That's huge. That's what you're trying to buy with your ads. And it is no. Start the story, right? You start the story. That's a nice thing. Um, Like this week, I'm doing a a little campaign. Uh, It's going to be, it's it's, it's basically boosting six posts that each one tells a story. And I'm boosting it to uh, my ideal audience that I, I, chiseled out that I want to send out to. And I send that to the same audience every week. And you can see that there's a constant uh, following that. And I'm telling the story of you taking it from A to B over the course of uh, five different posts. And there's a drawing in there. And you go to my Instagram, you can look and see what I'm, what the ones with a little Bentley in it. Or they're all getting boosted and they're all going out in separate days. And there's a lead up to the one funnel away challenge. So. Uh, I, I, you can track things like that, and that's uh, – uh, I can't wait to see what the end result is, you know. And when you start doing that with cars on your lot, the same thing. Uh, you, you, you'll, you'll see which one's got some instant response, and then you can do follow-up videos. Like you said, just turn the phone on, you know. I love what- it, man. I was so, just like, going to pull up your Instagram because you, cause you brought that up. And, you know, it's, it's – uh, it's interesting because when we look at like doing stuff on Instagram, um, I, I've, I've grown to love the platform of Instagram. Um, I love this. You're talking about the one funnel away challenge too. Like I love seeing the, you yeah. know, the stuff that, that kind of stuff. Like I did, um, I did a post on Instagram. Oh, I don't know when it was. I'll tell you when it was. I'll look at the date on it. Uh, on December 30th. And it was staying socially, uh, social media happy in 2019. And I've had this vision in my mind of, because Instagram lets you swipe through the pictures, right? Of going, create like you said, creating a story. But yeah. instead of being in separate pictures that they go to and they have to back out of the post, just creating them all in one little post, right? Step one, step two, okay. step three, step four. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, like when I created that, um, I shared it on Instagram, but I shared that same thing on Facebook, which then made rid of all the photos. And it got... <laughs> some okay interaction. Like, you know, people were like, Oh, this is great. Or I like this, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and having fun with it. And the funny thing was though, I didn't, I didn't put all the hashtags in on Instagram that I normally would. Right. Like I didn't put in like, um, you know, the, the entrepreneur tags and stuff that I know attract automatic bot comments and interaction because I wanted to see if I just do this organic post and I put a couple things that were relevant, right? New Year, New Year's Eve, social media, 
share Instagram, uh, drama free, share this. Yeah. Not a lot, you know what I mean? I know, that's what I like about Instagram. It's the wild, wild west. There's no right or wrong because they're doing it ahead of us. So, bingo. The, yeah, there you That's like lock me off the leash knowing that. <laughs> exactly. It. It's cool. And, and you get like, um, you get some, like, I got some decent interaction, but what that one helped me see the most was, um, the audience that's following on Instagram, this is the tricky part. Um, if you don't build an audience to a specific niche, it's like what Sean Thomas said down in Nashville. Right. You get a bunch of followers, but it doesn't yield any results. Yeah, you'll get 30,000 people that are following you in Nigeria, but your product doesn't is for people that are going to buy in Nigeria. What good is it? That, I, yeah, yeah, you got to. Like, I look at like a post, Ask a Millionaire, Sean Thomas, right? So he's got over over a million followers out in that account, 1.3. And I just looked at his, like his last post. You know what's cool? Saying you're going to do something and doing it. That's cool. Literally, that's the post, right? Uh, uh, 905 people liked it, but comment-wise, 24. Uh, the one right before it, 825 likes, 10 comments. Now, he's got a huge following. He actually makes money on Instagram. But if you look at it, like, the interesting thing is, now here's a different post that was, like, the wealth phase, had eight different phases image. It's, like, three posts ago. 7,000 people liked that. I know. And 155 commented. Now that is right there. What? Why? Because it isn't just a, here's a cool quote. It isn't just a, you know, uh, here's another cool quote. This literally is a, here's an eight phases to wealth. It spoke directly to the niche, like what you were saying earlier. Find the person and talk to them. And on that post, out of his 1.3 million followers, over 7,000 interact or, you know, liked it. So it means interacted with it. And then 155 took the time to comment. That's good opportunity. That's 155 opportunities to That's sell cool. what you do to people. Right. So if you have a one car, if you, use, you have one u- unique used car, the chances of finding five people that want that one car locally if you dial Instagram down to uh, like a geofence in area, chances are they're out there. And uh, that's, that's the beauty of uh, like Gary Vaynerchuk says, we're trading in attention. You know, that's what all social media marketing is. And the attention is there every day. There are people are on their phones every day. So story. if you get a message to somebody that, uh, you know, is looking for you, whatever particular car you have on the lot, then they'll connect you for relatively cheaply too. You know I mean? It's, it's, I've always, it's, I'm advertising on Instagram right now. I'll tell you, man, I've, uh, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, share this with you in the past. Uh, I've struggled with utilizing social media in a way that brought uh, leads in. For dealers, um, and it was literally because the ads were just wrong. Like they were wrong, you know. They were just just too generalized, right? Like you know, uh, looking looking to get approved with bad credit. You know, ABC dealership, everybody's approved. Blah 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 blah. It's true. It's good. It's all right and honest, right? But the better way is, uh, you know here's the picture of the Chevy Suburban for your family or whatever. I'm going looking to find a Chevy Suburban with room for your family, but have bad credit. We have this Chevy Suburban and everyone gets approved here. We can help your family drive this Suburban home today. It's right there, babe. That was gold. That was marketing gold. That was it. 59 seconds. You told a quick story and, uh, and, and that, resonates with people that are in that situation and that's what all we're trying to do that's all we're trying to do with a 59 second video is a quick introduction if they contact you back then the conversation continues that's what it's all designed to do from there so you can get five people to call you back and, and you, you and your selling ability can 
get them to sit across the desk from you and continue the conversation. Well, there's the marketer's challenge. And that comes with setting the stage right with the client. Because a lot of what's happening out there, you look at uh, Billy Jean, Tyler Lopez, Russell Brunson, and, and you look at like um, ad agency people that are in the auto industry. And what they're selling is, we're going to help you sell more cars. Stop saying that. You don't sell shit. <laughs> the dealer or the restaurant or the, you know, whatever your, whoever your client is, it's their job to sell their product. As a marketer, it's your job to get them people to talk to, right? That's the difference. And the problem is uh, a lot of folks are out there selling that you're, you're going to sell more stuff. I'm going to help you sell more stuff. It's like, no, I'm going to help you get more opportunities to sell more stuff. And I think a lot of folks, if they would just be honest about that and say, look, if you do these videos, it's going to get more eyeballs. And they're going to see how to contact you. And let 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 me do this for you. I, one of the things that was great, I actually watched a, a, a training deal from Billy Jean, uh, you know, Billy Jean Marketing. Um, I think his, his uh, little videos are creative, right? They're cute. They're funny. Uh, I also think I'm like, man, this guy, and it's funny because here's the funny part. When I see him, I go, oh, this guy, like, it's just so cheesy. And I, yet I go, all right, I'm going to look and see what he's doing now with his cheese ball crap. Right, he did the dumb Wolf of Wall Street video, <laughs> walking through his office, and I'm just like, it. I the I'm going to be honest, it for some reason just pissed me off. I watched <laughs> it, and I'm like, God, I hate this. Like I hate this so much. And it was an eight minute video. Wow. I watched the entire freaking thing, telling myself how much I hated it, but I watched the whole thing. And That's it, a long time to be a dancing bear. Exactly. Now I'm going to tell you, it didn't get me to convert. Now later, fast forward, he did a different video where he said, I'm going to show you in this video, a live call with a customer, how I get the customer, how we build the campaign, what we did for them, and how, how I get someone to go from trying me to buying me. And that literally in that video, he, he found the ideal customer. They had a business. It was like a, a, a bungee business or trampoline, whatever business. He picks up the phone and said to the gentleman on the phone, my name's Billy Jean. We've never met. You've never heard of me. But what I want to do is bring a whole bunch of people to your business. Are, is that okay with you? Well, of course. What's the guy going to say? No. So the guy was like, yeah. He goes, the only thing that I'd ask is if, if I can do what I say and I can bring you a bunch of people, uh, would you consider working working with me on an ongoing basis and letting me continue to do it? The guy says, yeah. Well, obviously, he didn't talk about price. He didn't talk about anything yet. So he builds out a, a Facebook campaign, right? Obviously, he talked to the guy about, like, what he didn't show was the conversation they had about the deal that was structured for the customer, you know, the big discount that the the will attack them. The offer, the yeah. offer was – a seven, you know, seventy five percent off if if you buy two, like so you and a friend, right? And they did this ad, like um, you know, want to cross bungee jumping off your bucket list? Because uh, he talked about psychology of that is when you do a bucket list thing, you always do it with a friend, right? Just like the movie, the bucket list. So, yeah. so the the offer was, you know, it, it you know for you and a friend. Get 75% off and cross it off of both your bucket lists. So in the seven-day ad that he ran at his expense, not the businesses, uh, they generated 83 leads, 83 phone calls that came in, of which the guy sold 23. Now, that's 23 new customers brought into the business. And then, you know, he said to the guy, okay, so you closed X amount of, uh, X amount of these deals. The guy goes, oh, yeah, well, we've sold 23 so far. We've got about another 20 that will be done in the next day, I think. And, uh, and Billy said to him, okay, now that we've done that, would you let us keep doing this for you for whatever it was, 1000 bucks a month? Right. And the guy goes, absolutely. Now, Billy Jean probably spent uh, 100 bucks in ads. But that guy made over $1,000 in profit yes. from these ads. And that's the big thing I think uh, that's a good opportunity for all of us is um, with being a marketer online, it is, you're talking about measuring your results. If you're running ads, 
you can track the whole journey. You create a landing page, you do whatever. Like um, I'm not sharing, like, like we're not sharing screens, but we built, if you go to, um, until Friday, we're doing this offer. Um, we, we, we are done with the buy one, get one tickets, but we decided to run a flash sale till Friday. Uh, and actually got the idea from Grant Cardone looking at his growth kind deal. Uh, so we ran a flash sale for two for one tickets for one ninety five. And if you go through, if you were to click on which uh, you'll only see it through posts or an ad, uh, it's not like a link on our website. Um, but when you click on that ad, it'll take you to uh, rockstarautoconference.com forward slash BOGO dash offer. Okay. Are there like, take- uh, like banner ads? You're talking about banner ads? Uh, no, I'm talking about like um, Facebook ads, so a Facebook ad or whatever. Um, so if you see that ad and you click it, it will take you to the page. The page has the countdown because it's only for, you know, so much time. And it says, you know, uh, claim or, you know, uh, get my get the, get the my code or whatever is the call to action button, right? Uh, and when somebody clicks it, it just it takes them to a, a second version of the page where they enter their email address and it says, Put in your email address and the code will be sent to you right now. They do. 60 seconds later, the code arrives at their inbox. But after they click it, it automatically takes them to the checkout page. Done, easy, whatever. I think we've got to spell out to people what's going to happen in their journey. And they're yeah. going to be more apt to go through the journey. And, and what, you just, 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 what you just described is a key element, too. We, as marketers, have to get better at making all the steps that we send people through seamless so uh there's no reason for them to stop you know going through uh, all the all the steps that we want to go through and uh dealerships are getting a lot better at that too when they first came out there was you know you had search everywhere for the website to find this and then you had to go back three pages in the website to find that well now it's different now you have to take them seamlessly when they find you probably on their phone yep through all the steps and that's what uh, that's what the attention is all about and it's got to be and this sounds so basic but this is so critical uh, it has got to be mobile perfect like when you if you end up on our flash sale offer page like this you know everything is there it's big it's easy um, a lot of folks make the basic mistakes that we've made, which is like, you know, you do a big header image, right? A banner image, let's say it's 1920 by 1080, uh, you know, with height, um, which is a typical screen, you know, if it's sideways, whatever. But the problem is on a mobile device, if you've got text and call outs or whatever, uh, it'll, it'll shrink it down so much. They can't read it. Yeah. yeah. So what you have to do is, you know, when you're building a header like that, you build it as, two images that are uh, 960 by 1080. Uh, and then when it goes to mobile, it'll stack them and it'll still look good. Right, right? Right. So you, have an image, yeah. you have to build mobile first in yep. the way that you structure building everything if you want the most impact. Yeah. And so I, there's a lot of cool stuff out there, man. A lot of process to it now. It's cool. Well, look, this is the Cardio Hacking Podcast. So, uh, I want, if you can, just give me a secret to uh, uh, something that our listeners can do in the next 30, 60, 90 days to help them be more successful selling cars. Just one thing that they can incorporate into what they're doing to try to make them become a little better. What would you suggest that they could do? Simplest thing they could do to increase what they're doing now. Simplest thing that they could do. And I'm not going to go holistic. But they could take action on it. It would help them. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, uh, you know, my answer always to people is, you know, uh, stop focusing on the process and start focusing on the person. But that's, you know, people get all holistic on that. So I'm going to tell you one uh, physical action you can take. And that right. is the build out a five-day, Russell Brunson likes to call them a soap opera sequence, call it an indoctrination sequence, whatever you want. Build out a five-day uh, why buy sequence. I'll call it a why buy sequence as a car dealer. Um, if you're a car salesperson, uh, build out a five-day introduction to who you are and why they should do business with you, and uh, start sending that to everybody who does or doesn't buy a car from you, and build that out. That's what I would say. That's a a right now deal. There you go. Soap opera sequence. Um, yes. Funnel you. 
That's awesome. And that's exactly, exactly what I would recommend. Like, um, so that whether they buy a car, or they don't buy a car. It's a, Hey, we had a chance to talk and I'd like you to know me a little better. That's good. And here's why I say that that's the thing they could do to take action. Um, that, that'll help them the next 30, 60, 90 days. Because a lot of times, you know, Jeffrey Gittimer said this, um, all things being equal, people would rather buy from friends, all things not being equal. They'd still rather buy from a friend. This will help you get closer to becoming a friend. Very cool. And so doing that gives you a better chance than the, the guy or girl down the street that didn't do that. Absolutely. Well, let's see what else we got here. Oh, let me ask you real quick. I think we got uh, two minutes. If you could do it all over again, knowing what you know now, what would you do different? Whew. I would be focusing outside of the automotive industry first because they're a lot easier to sell stuff to. <laughs> No, you know what? Uh, if I could do it all over again, business-wise, I'll tell you what I would have done first, uh, done differently. I would have stayed more consistent because that's something that I always struggled with was consistency and keeping the brand out there. Oh, yeah. Right. So that's the biggest thing I'd do differently. Cool. Very cool. Well, listen, I really appreciate you showing up, uh, uh, taking the time to talk. And uh, if there's any anybody's got any other questions, they can go to – Rockstar. Yeah, go to rockstarevents.info, uh, rockstar events, plural, dot .info. Uh, and that'll take you right to the site, and uh, you can learn more about what we're doing there um, and more about the upcoming events. And we'd sure love to have you guys join us. Also, if you're on Facebook and you want some, some, some people to interact with, like Barry, that can give you some great insight and knowledge, uh, look up the Rockstar Automotive Wolf Pack uh, and join the group. Um, make sure you answer the questions. Though. If you don't answer the questions, we won't let you in the group because uh, it's oh, just no. – Crap. <laughs> so, come join Barry, myself. When am I going to see you again? When's the next conference? In, May 13th and 14th, Las Vegas, Nevada. See you there, man. See you, Barry. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining, bud. You've been listening to Car Dealer Hacking with Barry Newman. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.wholesalecarflipping.com.